Good day, I'm Jian, your nurse for today. So for today, we're going to assist our patient with the use of assistive device. So first, we need to identify our patient using two identifiers. Next, we should review the doctor's order. And next, determine the best time to ambulate our patient. Next, check our patient's environment for barriers or any safety risks. Next, perform hand hygiene and assess readiness to ambulate the patient by obtaining vital signs and range of motion or ROM and muscle strength for lower, lower extremities. For now, I need to ambulate myself to use the assistive device with having proper body mechanics and gates. Next, before we start, perform hand hygiene and I've already performed hand hygiene. And also, we need to sanitize the ambulation devices to prevent the spread of microorganisms. So first assistive device that we're going to use is the cane. So we have here an improvised cane. So first, we need to help the patient to walk using the cane. So we need to make sure the patient holds the top of the cane beside the stronger leg. So let's assume that this is the weaker side of the leg and for properly fit of the cane, make sure the foot of your patient is at least 4 inches away at the bottom of the cane. And the elbow is bended at least 15 to 30 degrees angle. And the wrist must level at the top of the cane. So let's assume that the level of the cane is properly fit to it. So first we need to instruct the patient to move forward the cane. Next, while moving forward the cane, let's advance the weaker side of the leg. Next is to follow the stronger side. So let's try to walk. So let's try to walk. So assume that this is the weaker side of the leg. This is the, sh the stronger side of the leg. So instruct the patient to move forward the cane and advance also the weak side then the strong side the weak side in the cane the strong side weak side in the cane then the strong side so weak side in the cane then stronger side weak side in the cane then stronger side weak side in the cane then stronger side so the next assistive device that we're going to use is the crutches we have here an improvised crutches and we will assist our patient to walk using appropriate gait. So using these crutches, we need to instruct our patient to use the four-point gait. So assume that these are the crutches, then the height of the crutches must be fit to the height of the patient. So let's assume that these crutches is fit to my height. So by the use of these crutches, begun with tripod position. Position the crutches in front of your feet. Then walk with the use of four point gait. So advance the right crutch. Then follow with the left foot. Advance the left crutch. Follow the right foot. Advance the right crutch. Follow the left foot. Left crutch to the right foot. So right crutch, left foot, left crutch, right foot, right crutch, left foot, left crutch, right foot. So next, instruct the patient using the three point A. So begin with tripod position. Then let's assume that this is the affected leg. Then, then advance the stronger leg. Then follow both crutches. Next, instruct the patient using the two point gate. So first, begin with the tripod position. Next, move the left crutch, then advance the right foot. Left crutch with the right foot. Left crutch with the right foot. Right crutch with the left foot. 
left crutch with the right foot, right crutch with the left foot, left crutch with the right foot. So next, instruct the patient using the swing to the So first, we need to begin in tripod position. Next, advance the both crutches. Next, let the crutches hold the body weight. Then proceed with both legs. Advance both crutches. Proceed with both legs. Advance, then both legs. Both crutches, both legs, advance, and both legs. So lastly, instruct the patient using the swing through gait. So begin first with tripod position. Then, both advance both crutches forward and lift and swing through the leg through the crutches. So lastly, we need to ambulate our patient using a walker. So let's assume that this is a walker. So first, we need to instruct the patient to move at the center of the walker, like this. Then, place the hands of the patient at the hand grips. Then the elbow must be bent 15 to 30 degrees angle. So, using a walker, advance the walker, then proceed with the weaker side of the leg. Let's assume that this is the weaker side of the leg. So, let's try to walk using a walker. Advance the walker, then advance the weak side, then the strong side. Walker, weak side, then the strong side. Walker, weak side, and the strong side. So, walker, weak side, then strong side. Walker, weak side, and strong side. Walker, weak side, and strong side. Lastly, if the patient wants to be comfortable in bed or in chair, help the patient or instruct the patient using a walker. So let's assume that this is the weak side and this is the strong side. So place the walker in front of the patient and help him to or her to sit down. So first, place the walker in front, then bend, bend the stronger side, then elevate the weak side. Then assist the patient to sit down by holding the sofa or the chair. Then bend the stronger side, then proceed to sit down. Then if he or she wants to be more comfortable, set aside the walker. So in another perspective, place the walker in front, then bend, bend the stronger side, elevate the weak side, then proceed to sit down. Hold the sofa or the chair, then proceed to sit down, and to be more comfortable, set aside the walker. Lastly, after performing all the assistive procedures with your patient, don't forget to perform hand hygiene. So, let's assume that I've already performed hand hygiene and I've already sanitized my hands. Next is to instruct the patient to report signs of dizziness and numbness in the upper torso or extremities. Next, don't forget to document and obtain vital signs of the patient. And lastly, document the evaluation of learning of the patient. So that's all. Thank you.